I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Welcome back to Morning Manor. We're so excited uh, to have you join us on this morning. We are starting a brand new series entitled, Can You Control Your Tongue? Looking at James chapter number three. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Dear God, our Father in heaven, how we bless you and how we thank you for a new day filled with your new mercies. We pray this morning as we study your word that you once again will open our hearts and our minds to hear what your spirit is saying to us. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Open your Bibles to the book of James, chapter number three. And I want to start reading at verse number three. James chapter three. And I want to start reading at verse number three. And I'm reading from the New King James translation of the Bible. James chapter three and verse three. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds. They are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird or reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so can you tame, can you control your tongue? We have all heard the old adage, the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will not hurt me. Our words cannot hurt me. Some say names cannot hurt me. Uh, this is an old saying. As a matter of fact, this saying appeared in print in 1862. It was published in what is called uh, the Christian Reporter or the Christian Recorder. The Christian Recorder was a publication uh, put out by the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And in 16... All right, 1862, uh, this was the first appearance of that saying. Now, I have to uh, say that this is a nice saying. It's a good saying. But then this saying, no matter how famous it is, uh, it can be used for motivation. It can be used to encourage someone. But being called negative names, being called... Uh, out of your name can indeed be hurtful. We are all sensitive uh, when we feel that we are being attacked. We can be very sensitive 
when someone calls us a name or calls us some names that don't necessarily define who we are. Uh, so I remember the old saints, my mom, my grandmother, and older saints say, if you can't say anything nice about a person, don't say anything at all. And that's the attitude that we need to have when it comes to using our tongue. Uh, the way we talk and the way we use our words in a conversation says a lot about who we are. Let me say that again. The way we talk and the way we use words in conversations says a lot about who we are. Your words can give life or your words can speak death. Isn't that amazing how uh, so many people use their tongues to be bullies or people use their tongues to tear someone down. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 11 says, listen to this, Proverbs 10 and verse 11 says this, the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. I like what the NIV says in this verse. It says the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. Let me repeat that. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. So, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Do you have a righteous tongue or do you have a violent tongue? Do you have a tongue that speaks good or do you have a tongue that speaks evil? It is very important. It is of the utmost importance that we learn how to control our tongues. You need to learn how to control your tongue. Once negative words leave out of your mouth, you can never retract them. So many people have spoken out of turn or they're spoken without thinking, and they've caused a world of pain, a world of hurt, not only to others, but even uh, to themselves. God gave us two ears and one tongue for a reason. Um, so we have to listen twice as much as we talk. Listen twice as much as you talk. Uh, everyone, the Bible says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. That's in the book of James chapter 1 and verse 19. Let me read that again. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And I'm sure this lesson today, as we look in James chapter 3, I'm sure this lesson is for someone who has been struggling with an out-of-control tongue. This is for those of you who can't Keep your mouth shut. You can't control the negativity that comes out of your mouth. You have taken negative words and you have assassinated the character of many people. Uh, people uh, you don't even know personally by your words, you have hurt them and you have caused them 
great damage. You have messed them up as far as how the public perceives them because of your tongue. In James chapter 3, the book of James chapter 3, James has a lot to say about the tongue. If you look at verses 3 through 10, he, he gives us several characteristics of the tongue. And we want to look at these characteristics today because when we think about the tongue, uh, we have to understand that when we belong to God, if we surrender our whole being to the Lord, not just our spirit, and uh, our flesh, but part of that, we have to surrender the whole person, the whole man to God. That means you've also surrendered your tongue to God, and you're not going to fly off the handle. You're not going to say anything, or you're not going to have an opinion that is not based upon facts. Uh, I said on Sunday in my sermon, it is dangerous to assume things. I, I struggle with people who always have an answer to every problem in the world. They can tell you about your life. They can tell you why you're going through what you're going through. And they don't really have a clue about what they're talking about. So some people just like to hear themselves talk and they're talking without facts. They're talking without evidence. They're talking because that's what talkers like to do. They like to run their mouths even when they are running their mouths out of turn and for the wrong reasons. Let's look at James chapter 3 again. And I, I want to read, I'm going to go back to verse 3. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths and they, that they may obey us. And we're able to take a bit in the mouth of a horse and you can turn that whole horse. As big and strong as a horse is, if you could put a bit in their mouth, you have control. And then he says in verse 4, look at ships. Although they are so large and they're driven, driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Man can control ships with a rudder. They can turn a whole ship around. They can turn a ship to the left or to the right by something so small. But then in verse 5, he says, let's look at the tongue. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. The tongue is small. But boy, the tongue can do a lot of damage. The tongue can do some great damage. There are several things we want to talk about. The tongue, controlling the tongue, putting the tongue under submission to who you are in Christ. And we'll pick up next week with the question, can you control your tongue? Until next week, won't you read James chapter 3 and read verses 1 through 12. And as we pick up next week about controlling the tongue, we will find some fascinating things James talk about what the tongue is. And I want to break those down uh, next week. God bless you.